Hi, I'm Dennis. And in this video, I will show you how I made this Corinthian column out of a branch and gold colored epoxy resin using a special lock and key technique to be able to rotate it in 90 degree increments so that I could carve it on all four sides. Now, you don't need any special equipment or make modifications to your CNC machine for this lock and key technique. All you need are a few pieces of MDF and a smart way to design your toolpaths. And I will explain how you can do this too using this Greek column as an example. The principles of this lock and key technique are very similar to the vertical tabs technique that he used to carve the frog on a leaf. And in this video, I will walk you through the steps of the lock and key technique. I purchased this 3D file of this Corinthian column on TurboSquid and placed limit planes at 45 degree angles on the left and right sides to span a total of 90 degrees. As you can see, the two limit planes do not intersect in the center of the column. Since finishing bits have a rounded nose, I had offset these limit planes down a few millimeters to create a 5 millimeter overcut distance while retaining the absolute boundaries so that the overall shape remained a perfect square. Now that I had determined the dimensions, I picked a branch that was slightly wider and longer than the column that I designed. I removed the bark and cleaned it up with a steel brush. I wanted to make a rectangular shaped stock out of this cylindrical branch, so I used the bandsaw and my homemade milling sled to quarter the branch by first cutting it in half over the entire length and then doing the same for each of the two halves. I cut a mold from MDF to the size of the stock dimensions, covered the panels with duct tape and glued them together with heat glue. I then cut the branch quarters to length so that they would fit inside the mold. To create a three-dimensional river table effect, quarter one would swap places with quarter four and quarter two with quarter three. But the layer of heat glue in the corners of the mold would prevent the 90 degree corners of the quarters to fit snugly into the mold. So I rounded off the sharp edges with an orbital sander. I secured quarters 1 and 2 to the bottom of the mold with a drop of heat glue and fixed quarters 3 and 4 just below the top edge of the mold. According to my calculations, I needed roughly 96 oz of epoxy resin. So I poured 48 oz of part B into a bucket to which I added another 48 oz of part A. After doorly mixing, I added only one scoop of gold mica powder, as I wanted the epoxy to remain somewhat transparent, and then mixed it all again. I then poured the mixture into the mold that I had pre-cooled in the freezer. When working with such large volumes of epoxy resin, I found that pre-cooling the mold in the freezer for a couple of hours is a great way to keep things cool and prevent the liquid from bubbling out of the mold. But man, it's cold in here. I really need to think of a smarter way to do this. Two days later, the epoxy resin had hardened enough to remove the panels. Before starting the CNC routing, I jointed the bottom for perfectly right angles with the sides, and then used the planer to do the same for the top side, until the stock was squared slightly larger than the dimensions of the Greek column. I used V-Carve to design the toolpath, I first drew the clamp holes in the CNC bed as reference points, so that the center hole lined up with the center of the 3D column. I had made the stock longer than the column, so that there would be enough material to carve the square keys on the top and the bottom of the column. When looking at it from the bottom of the column, I positioned the keys in the exact center of the top and the bottom. These keys could then rest in pockets carved in a scaffold of three MDF panels stacked together. I designed the locks 0.1mm wider than the keys for a tight fit and left a 2mm space above and below the stock for some wiggle room. Looking at the whole setup from above, the scaffold for the locks was placed at the opposite ends of the 3D column, using the left and right holes to secure the locks onto the CNC bed and the center holes to clamp the stock. Keeping in mind that router bits are cylindrical, I also added fillets in the corners of the locks so that the keys would fit all the way in. Since the corners of the column's keys will also be rounded on the sides, the space between the locks and the column's top and bottom serves the same purpose as the fillets. Once done, you can rotate the keys of the stock inside these locks for a full 360 degrees in increments of 90 degrees. Enough talk. Let's get started. 
the keys had to be carved in two stages. For the first stage, I secured the stock as straight as possible on the resin seabed using some duct tape as well as clamps. All the cars for the locks and keys were done with the same quarter inch end mill. Even though I had covered the X rails and gantry wheels with paper, I installed a dust shoe to prevent the static epoxy flakes from sticking to the CNC. I then carved the first half of the keys at the top and bottom ends of the column. Once that was done, I cut six pieces of MDF for two stacks of three pieces that were held together by recessed screws. I used a drill press to drill three perfectly straight holes and secured the MDF scaffolds onto the bed using the left and right side holes. I centered the router bit in between the scaffolds to carve the locks. From here on, it was essential to not change the X and Y zero coordinates anymore, as all of the following carves, including the roughing and finishing passes, would have their zero origin at the exact center point in between the locks. After cleaning up the dust, the partially carved keys fitted snugly into the locks. I checked the height to make sure that the keys had gone all the way down and then clamped the stock so that it would not wiggle its way out of the locks due to the side to side force of the router bit. I then finished the keys by carving their other sides on both ends of the column. The keys needed only a little bit of sanding, but they were now pretty much perfect squares. After cleaning the CNC, I put the stock back in place and used the center holes of the lock scaffolds to clamp the stock down. From then on, I ran the roughing passes using the same end mill and without changing any of the zero coordinates. Since the column was identical on all four sides, I had created only a single roughing pass that I repeated for each side. Roughing one side took about four and a half hours. When the roughing of all sides was completed, I swapped the end mill for a ball nose bit and initiated finishing passes. Since I changed bits, I needed to reset only the Z0 coordinate. With so many fine details in the top of the column, I had opted for a 1 16th conical bit from Amana tool, so each finishing pass took almost 6 hours. I could have reduced the finishing time by splitting the finishing in two separate passes using the 1 16th for the top and a wider bonus bit for the rest of the column. But the strategy with the single bit meant much less hands-on time. No need for swapping bits and resetting the Z0, just rotating and clamping the column three times. The fine tip of the ball nose bit also meant that I didn't need to do much cleaning up after routing. Just a brief touch up of the column's edges with the Dremel was all I needed to do. To finish it off, I coated the column with clear varnish. This made the color difference between the spring wood and summer wood stand out, and made the epoxy look semi-transparent with a sparkle of gold. The combination of wood with epoxy as well as the bubbles and cracks in the resin also gave the whole column a more ancient look. Okay, that's it. Now you know how to carve 3D objects with your CNC router using the lock and key technique. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.